All right, so this is gonna be a video about uh, our 1991 Dodge B250 Road Trek Versatile. So we've had this in the family since uh, the late uh, 1990s. And my parents had the uh, white portion of the van repainted. The burgundy has not. The reason for that being is that if you remember those vans, the paint was uh, flaking off in large chunks. So that's uh, the reason for that. So I guess we'll walk around the van and try and take a look at a few different things here. So right now it's set up for uh, seating. There's an extra cushion here that uh, my parents had made up so you could sleep between the uh, rear seats, like the rear, the second row of seats, I suppose. So this vehicle has a trunk in it. You just put those uh, two by fours across where you want to uh, sleep found that was better than trying to sleep using the uh, driver's and the passenger seat spun around backwards. It was kind of unrealistic the way they had that designed. So uh, these seats are not for traveling. You will find that there's seat belts that have been installed for them, but they are not legal. The stickers are still on the vehicle saying not to do that. Most of the lights have been switched to LED. I'll show you that when I get inside. This one here is uh, fluorescent is actually very good. So when you're sleeping in the back of the van, you're sleeping sideways, which is the way the Versatile does it. With the Popular, you are sleeping uh, lengthwise with the vehicle. So that would be the main difference between the two vans. And uh, Road Trek is really stuck true to their original design. I think that the modern Versatiles, whatever the last year was that they made them, if they're not making them anymore, was identical to this uh, layout, just a, a newer chassis. But generally you'll see that the uh, road tracks are all pretty much the same. I've got a, uh, a 2004 Popular next door here, and uh, it's pretty much the same as the 91 Popular was. This one has a uh, trailer hitch. You won't find that on very many of them. It's, I had to add that on my own while still maintaining the uh, trunk that's in there. The spare tire is right in there. The parents are having trouble with having the spare tire on the back door. You see there's a string that keeps the door from going too far. The uh, spare tire ripped off the uh, holder. Could be fixed. Just the uh, string worked pretty good. So we weren't planning on selling this van, it just ended up that way. Their parents decided to sell their van, so we don't really need to have two of them. There is a, a hole here, which uh, I need to resolve for the sale if we're going to sell it safety. Otherwise, uh, it would be a project for the, the next buyer. So this vehicle was up to uh, Alaska probably 15 years ago. And what happened was that the, uh, the body on this side filled up with some sand, ended up rusting out the uh, rocker panel and part of the body there. So uh, to stop the rust, I just cut it out, but uh, I wasn't planning on selling it, so I never went any further than that. I do have a replacement rocker panel and uh, a piece to go over here. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that, or I guess we have to figure that out between the seller and the buyer, which is myself as a seller. Under here, we got a little place that we store the uh, chlorine that we put in the tank. There's a, a GFI receptacle in here as well. I've replaced all of the uh, other receptacles with GFIs because that's kind of the modern way of doing it. You fill the water for uh, the tank in there. The seats are wearing down. We found that these uh, towels were the easiest way to resolve that. So what I was trying to say is uh, rather than turning the seat backwards and folding it down and sleeping on it some kind of crazy way, we have an extra cushion that goes here so you can have a third person sleeping across the van. I felt that that was a uh, a better way of doing it, my father did rather. 
and I feel the same. Got the fantastic fan running. Even if you have an air conditioner, you still want to have one of these because you don't want to run your air conditioner all the time. I find that uh, they are fantastic. Although that's a, a polar air, it's not the fantastic fan. You can uh, you can have it work as a intake or exhaust, and you can also maintain change of speed, which is pretty good. So, uh, yeah, these lights have been turned over to LED. Rather than having incandescent bulbs and everything. You got the typical three cabinets that you would see in a road trek. If it had air conditioning, you would not have this. So our new van has air conditioning, and we've lost a lot of storage as a result of that. Something my parents never really liked about the new van. Again, some more storage in here. There's a receptacle for the air conditioner if you were to install one. It's got the uh, fume hood. Up the fan. So I'm five foot ten, and uh, it's about the right height for myself. You're probably limited to about six feet tall for sleeping in this. Otherwise, you would need to get the popular. That way you can hang your feet off of the end of the bed with the popular, which you can't really do with this unless you want to sleep on a bit of an angle. So it's got a Wedgwood uh, two element uh, stove top. We never use it. We don't cook in the vehicle at all. It's got a sink. We don't have any water, but the pump works. Pumps just underneath of here. That's where you winterize it as well. It only takes about two minutes to winterize this vehicle. I'll do another vehicle for the buyer on how to use the van. It has a fridge from 2004. We found that the new fridges are a bit deeper than the original fridges. So we had to uh, stretch that out. So uh, I think the rest of the body is oak. That's just uh, basic wood. And this piece here, as you can see, doesn't quite match the oak. If had a cabinet maker come in, he could just veneer over this. Or you can live with it, which is the way we did it. It's got a little window here. Normally we keep that closed because uh, the way these are done, the uh, bathroom is also the kitchen. So we just have a strap here so the door doesn't pop open when you're driving. For privacy. You can do that. We actually, when we sleep in the city, rather than pulling the curtains on the front of the van, we just close the, uh, the door, this one here actually, and block it off. That way people can't tell there's anybody sleeping in the van. So we don't go to campgrounds very often. So there's a clasp here. So that's why normally you would close this because the toilet is right there. There's also a, a small table that goes in the front. We've never used it. We just leave it at home actually when we're traveling. Otherwise you gotta keep moving it out of the way. Toilet uh, is there. Shelving on top. Rack here. The water fresher will keep that there. Close the hasp there. So there's a little clasp here that, eh, it doesn't really work as well as Road Trek hoped, I guess. So we just uh, clasp these together. See if we can do it one handed or not. Yeah, I'll do it later. So, curtains here, curtains on that side. 
cleaned the fridge out here with some uh, bleach wipes there earlier today. So fridge works, although I discovered over the winter the on-off for the gas stopped working. <clears throat> I'm not too sure why, so the indicator doesn't work it, as you might expect it to. So we just have it on AC right now, you can put it on DC as well. My battery it is about to die, so I'll just show you the front here. So it's got power doors, power locks, no cup holders, but it has an ashtray. We were thinking a bit differently back then. Now we store ashes on the ground with their cigarette butts and make a big mess. Anyway, there's a brake controller. I never used it. I did uh, pull a car back from North Carolina to here. It was a collector car, so not heavy. Didn't abuse the vehicle at all. I just disclose that if anybody's wondering why there's a brake controller in here. But uh, I used a U-Haul trailer, so I didn't need electric brakes in the end anyway. Fire extinguisher there, CO2, carbon monoxide, or sorry, carbon monoxide and fire detector, and down there is electrical panel. And to the left of it, there is a liquid propane detector, which is fresh. When this stuff gets old, they will go into constant alarm to tell you when it's time to replace them. I believe you should get familiar with them. The manuals for everything are in here as well. Like I said, the van presents nicely. So we weren't really planning on selling it, but now that we've got two of them here, we're kind of looking for a quick sale just so we have some space in our driveway. So we don't really need four vehicles in our driveway all the time. Propane tank is in here. There's a little small fuse panel in here. There's a transfer switch here for the battery. So whenever you plug in the van, it charges all the batteries in the vehicle. Battery in there. Plug in cable. Never done that before. You can plug in water here too. Be careful what kind of water you get. You want to test to make sure it's not full of iron before you hook it up to your vehicle. So this is, uh, I had this inspected in 2015, this tank. But, and that's when I took it out and painted it as well. But it's an ASME tank, so it doesn't actually need to have like a DOT inspection on a periodic basis, so uh, that wasn't necessary apparently. I'll just let you know that in case uh, again discussions with people when you're trying to get it filled. It's not a barbecue tank or a, a welding bottle kind of tank, which it needs to have uh, regular inspection. The fan is open there. So anyway, if anybody wants some additional information, I'd be happy to show you some more videos. So the, the white paint looks just as good as it does on the uh, 2004. Wasn't really planning on getting rid of it, but uh, here we are. So thanks for watching.